arquitectura es un método de diseño que nos ayuda a, a apreciar de mejor forma pues lo que la madre naturaleza ya por muchos años sabiamente ha, nos ha estado mostrando y necios no hemos querido ¿cómo se dice? notar eso es para mí la permacultura cada país, cada región tiene su conocimiento conocimiento autóctono eh, a lo mejor en ocasiones no se conoce en el contexto internacional y la parte de la permacultura, la permacultura per se, pues se le ha difundido dentro de lo posible. Se me hace interesante, mucho, mucho, muy interesante, eh, pero creo que debe serse muy pragmático, debe serse muy realista e intentar instrumentarla de acuerdo a las condiciones medioambientales en donde se esté trabajando. Para mí es vivir en armonía con la naturaleza y diseñar sistemas que nos sirvan para vivir en, el, en la tierra sin eh, tener costo mayor a la naturaleza. Aprendemos a vivir con ella, eh, pues con, la, con las plantas, con los animales, eh, nos hacemos más conscientes de, del consumo y más que nada de lo que tenemos alrededor, ¿no? que muchas veces cuando vivimos en la ciudad no nos damos cuenta ya que estamos todos apresurados, no te dan el tiempo ni para apreciar no sé, el cielo, el, un atardecer. La permacultura es un sistema de diseño que nos ayuda a diseñar asentamientos humanos de forma regenerativa y en armonía con el ambiente. Permacultura en realidad son, son ciclos, son utilizar las cosas, utilizar todo, eh, generar, limpiar, salud, son muchas cosas pues importantes, vitales para todos y es una manera de, pues, de vivir que es en realidad muy simple y de lo más lógico que he visto. Permaculture was a system that was developed by an Australian. His name is Bill Mollison and his student David Holmgren in the 1970s. And originally it was a contraction of two words, which is perma or permanent and agriculture. They were focused on perennial agriculture systems. We are typically used to seeing annual crop systems. Mm -hmm. So what Bill Mollison and David Holmgren were adamant about is that why not grow perennials that take a minimal amount of care, they come back every year, we don't have to start every year afresh. And uh, then David Holmgren went off to do his own work and to develop his site based on the principles that they were speaking about. And there are uh, about 35 different principles and methodologies that we use and uh, they're the leading ideas, the leading concepts, and then we work off of those concepts. And then Bill Mollison went out on his own and started to spread the word of permaculture and wrote, they did write a book together. Bill Mollison wrote a second book. The first one was Permaculture One, and then they, Bill Mollison wrote Permaculture Two, and he realized that it wasn't just strictly about permanent agriculture, that it is a comprehensive lifestyle, so it, it, it definitely involves plants and animals, but also the built environment, uh, how we utilize energy systems, how we deal with so-called waste, which in biological systems there is no waste. 
And so he, he was very much focused on creating healthy biological systems, but a house in essence was no different than a tree. We have inputs and outputs and how we use all of that. Uh, and he would always speak about uh, working with the biological intelligence of the place and trying to understand the local ecosystem or the local bioregion and that the systems that we set up uh, would mimic what's happening in the larger bioregion. Meaning that we are not going to recreate an ecosystem, but we're going to use what we call the ecosystem services or processes that are happening in a particular area and then plug in plants that are higher yielding, can create more harvest for human beings and for animals. And so that, this is how the system has developed through the years. So what I would say is it's very difficult to come up with just a straight definition of something that is so broad, but uh, I would say it's a comprehensive design system and uh, even as important as design is to be able to implement our systems and do them. Uh, that creates a sustainable land base. And uh, the movement, Mollison started traveling around the world in the 70s and 80s. He came to the United States in the 80s. And what he found was that a lot of people were taking his ideas and intellectualizing them and not actually manifesting them in an environment. So he stopped visiting the United States in the 1990s, but he did travel in many places. He was a field biologist and the whole basis of permaculture is ecology, which in ecology, it is about a community of <clears throat> beings, I guess we would call them, and uh, an exchange of materials and energy and trying to create a balance with those exchanges. That's what we're attempting to do on our properties. So we're setting up our own ecosystems. But he did travel a lot to a lot of more indigenous cultures and found that People, extended families of 25 people, were uh, supporting themselves on just a quarter acre of land. So in hectares, I mean, we're talking like a sixteenth of an acre. And <clears throat> the reason for this is because one of the principles of permaculture is to work with what we call stacking functions. So rather than just plant horizontally, we're planting vertically, and we're using every niche that we can find to put something in. And so we're smaller intensive systems, bringing all this in close to the home. That's much more efficient. Uh, us gardeners, we know that if we have a garden that's, you know, 20 meters away from the home, we're not gonna pay much attention to it. But if it's right at the back door, we know what's going on. It's always there, we can always see it. We can even look out from the house and see all these plants growing. So it's paying attention, it's observing, watching how things change through the year, understanding how the sun moves, understanding how the wind moves, where water comes from, where the prevailing rains come from, and making use of all these natural energies that move through the property, uh, attempting to eliminate a lot of gadgets and a lot of machinery, and using the natural forces that, as I just said, move through the property. Uh, I could go on and on. I mean, there, there are a million different things, but I think what's key to all of this in the essence of permaculture is to understand the principles and methodologies. And I think what that really comes down to essentially is what we call functional relationship. Understanding what the functions are of every element that we want to place in the landscape and then how to find the proper relationships. So a quick example of that is if we have chickens, typically people will go out and buy food for their chickens. What we would say is why not plant plants that bear a lot of seeds and then we can put those in combination with the chickens and they can feed themselves. Things like that. That is the most of all the design work that we do for properties or the design work that our students learn, that's the most difficult part of all this, to find those connections. In this way, we eventually create a balanced and harmonious ecosystem.